Hello everyone, this is Issa and I'll be showing you how to create a remote in Blender. Before we start, we need to check a few things. First, the frame rate. We use 30 FPS for Decentraland animations. You can check the frame rate for the Blend file in Output Properties, this printer icon in here, and under Format you'll find the frame rate. Make sure it is at least 30, because a lower FPS will make your animation play slow, and changing it after the animation is done will mess up your keyframes. In the rig file, it is already set to 30, but always make sure to double check it before you start. Next thing is pose mode. If you're familiar with animation, you probably know this, but in Blender you can only animate an armature in pose mode. You know you're in the right mode because the controls will have colors, so just select the rig, and in the drop down menu on the top left, Select Pose Mode. Now it's also the time to organize the workspace however suits you better. In the rig file, there are three windows Rev Editor, Dope Sheet, and Timeline. And they have everything you need to create your remote. I've imported an animation clip to show how these work. Down here, you'll find a timeline. These are the playback buttons. And in here, you can find the start and end frames for your animation. This button over here is the auto key. While on, it will automatically create a new keyframe whenever you manipulate a control. Let me show you how this works. So if you grab this control, you'll see that a keyframe was created in here. If the feature is off and you grab the control, you see that nothing happens and you have to manually create a keyframe. Some animators love this tool, while others hate it. And by default, it's on, but it's up to you to decide if you're gonna work with that or not. This middle window is a dope sheet. And here, you can edit your keyframes, create new actions, or go through the ones you've already created. Keep in mind that you only have access to the animation, when Action Editor is selected. To edit your keyframes, you can use the same shortcuts you use for manipulating objects. G for grabbing, or S for scaling. Both in here and in Graph Editor, you find this tool called Only Show Selected. When it's on, it will only include channels related to the selected control. This can be turned on and off by simply clicking on the arrow icon. Lastly, if you expand the summary, you have access to all the transform attributes for that particular control, and you can see which one of them have been keyframed. The top window is the graph editor. It's my favorite editing tool, and the one I use the most today. It's a more advanced editor, and can be a little overwhelming depending on your experience with animation. In here, you will find the animation curves for every transform property of every control. They show how the interpolation is being calculated, and they can be edited with the same shortcuts. I'm gonna expand the window to show you how the graph editor works. Uh, and here you can see all the attributes, the transform attributes for the control you have selected. So I'll select the hip control, and I only want to work with the Z rotation. So you can edit the curves in here, if you grab like an Y. You can also grab an X. And scale to scale y. Another interesting tool is that you can change the interpolation mode for, from Bezier, which is the one we are using to constant, for example. And it's a little more robotic, it gives you another effect on your animation. Let's change it back to Bezier. And we can also add this 
uh, set keyframe extrapolation, we can make it cyclic. So it keeps repeating the animation and you don't have to copy and paste all the keyframes. So I highly recommend you testing with this and you probably end up with some very interesting results and effects on your animation. This is the setup I like to use, but since each animator has their own preferences and Blender is highly customizable, feel free to set it up however you want. Alright, so let's get started. In the Dope Sheet window, make sure you have Action Editor selected. If you check the Browse Action, this drop down menu, you will notice that there is already a clip in here. Uh, it's called the Starting Pose, and it's actually just a pose. I've added it in there so you can start your animation from it, and this will help you with the transition from the idle, when the avatar is just standing there, to your remote, making the transition smooth. You also need to use this pose as the last frame of your animation, so the transition back to the idle is also smooth. I always like to have the original pose available without any editing. So let's duplicate this action by clicking on Create New Action. You can also click on the X to unlink the action and press the New button. This way, you start with no keyframes. I prefer editing what I already have, so I'll go with the duplicate version. Also, make sure to toggle Fake User, since this will save your action in case you unlink it. Don't forget to rename your action clip. Always name everything and keep your actions organized. I use the animation I've imported, so I don't have to start one from zero. I'll do another video with some animation tips, since I won't be covering the actual process in this one. I'm gonna rename this Test Emote. Do not use spaces or special characters for naming and write every word starting with a capital letter, like I did here. Now that we have an animation, let's export it the right way. The NFT emote cannot be longer than 10 seconds or 300 frames if you're animating at 30 FPS. So make sure your clip isn't longer than that and delete any unwanted keyframes after 300 if there's any. Our animation in this example has only 50 frames, so we are good to go. Since we can only have one animation per file, let's delete any extra ones. We can do that by selecting them in the Browse Action drop-down menu and click on the X while holding Shift. So let's do that with the starting pose. The starting pose 001. We only want the test mode. After doing that, the animation will show a zero next to it, which means that it will be deleted the next time you close Blender or reopen the file. So let's reopen this file. There you go, you only have one animation clip. We also only want the armature and the animation to be exported. So let's turn off the mesh visibility and any other object other than the armature before exporting. Don't need the ground reference, we don't need the animation area, we don't need the mesh. Only the armature. Now let's go to File, Export, GLB. We're going to expand Include and under Limit 2, we'll select Visible Objects. You can leave the rest as it is. We're going to expand animation, expand animation again, and check the export deformation bones only. This will make sure only the deforming bones are exported and not the controls and other setup bones. Here you'll also find the sampling rate. Sampling is a good way to optimize the animation. The sampling rate will define how often a keyframe will be baked in the animation. For example, with the sample set to 2, that means a keyframe will be baked every 2 frames. A sampling rate of 3 will bake a keyframe every 3 frames and so on. The higher the sampling rate, the lighter the file. 
but the lower the animation quality will be since it's losing some important keyframes. If the number of frames of the animation can be divided by the sampling rate, that's a good thing. It means that the final frame will be picked, preserving the transition from end to start of the animation. Since the max file size is 1 mega, if your animation exceeds that, you can use sampling rate to optimize it. Usually a sampling of 2 or 3 will do the trick without compromising the quality. In this case, I'll use 1. So let's export this. That's it for creating emotes in Blender. You can also find all this information on the rig documentation at decentraland.org. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and until next time.